Success Principles, How God Leads You to Wealth and Prosperity Written and published by God Daily News Introduction Imagine you're a farmer, sowing seeds in a field. Just as the type of the seed determines the fruit, the principles you sow into your life determine your success. You're about to uncover a blueprint for prosperity, based on age-old wisdom from the Bible. The book, Success Principles, How God Leads You to Wealth and Prosperity, guides you to align your actions with divine wisdom. Why should you bother? Because it's not just about financial wealth, it's about living a life of fulfillment and abundance in every area. So, are you ready to sow the right seeds? Before we begin, I'd like to appeal to those who still need to subscribe to the channel. Please subscribe, like, and share the video. God bless you as you do this. Also, check the video description for more information and resources. Thanks. Chapter 1 Aligning Your Mindset with God's Principles Embracing God's principles, you'll find your mindset aligning with a divine blueprint for success, shaping your thoughts and actions towards a purpose-driven life. As you submerge yourself in His Word, you'll discover an enriching clarity of purpose and a renewed vigor to pursue for greatness, not for your glory, but for His. You're encouraged to meditate upon His teachings daily. Joshua 1 verse 8 states, This book of the law shan't depart out of your mouth, but you'll meditate therein day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that's written therein, for then you'll make your way prosperous, and then you'll have good success. These aren't empty words, they're divine promises. Remember, God's principles aren't man-made rules. They're divine laws that guide us towards fulfilling our God-given purpose. Aligning your mindset with God's principles isn't a one-time event. It's a continual process of learning, growing, and refining. It's committing to a lifelong journey of seeking wisdom and understanding from the Creator of all things. Proverbs 2 verse 6 reminds us, For the Lord gives wisdom, from His mouth come knowledge and understanding. Don't be disheartened if you falter along the way. You're a work in progress, and God's grace is sufficient. When you don't understand, seek Him. When you fall, He'll lift you up. When you're weak, His strength becomes yours. You're not alone in this journey. With God by your side, success isn't just a possibility, it's a divine promise. Aligning your mindset with God's principles is your first step towards a purposeful and prosperous life. Chapter 2 Developing a Servant Leadership Mindset as you connect your attitude with God's values, another step to enhance your road towards success is to create a servant leadership mindset. This philosophy has strong origins in what Jesus Christ taught. This mindset isn't about being subservient, rather it's about adopting the heart of a servant for the benefit of those you lead. To develop this mindset, it's essential to understand what it means to be a servant leader. In Matthew 20 verses 26-28, Jesus said that whoever wants to become great must be your servant. This doesn't mean you're weak or lacking ambition. It means you're willing to put others before yourself, just as Christ did for us. Start by embracing humility. Proverbs 22 verse 4 tells us that the reward for humility and fear of the Lord is riches, honor, and life. You're not above anyone else, and you're not too important to do the smallest task. Recall that Christ performed the act of cleansing his disciples' feet, a task usually assigned to slaves. Next, focus on serving others. Philippians 2 verse 4 implores us to look not only to our own interests, but also to the interests of others. As a leader, your primary goal should be the well-being and success of your team. Lastly, lead by example. In 1 Corinthians 11 verse 1, Paul encourages us to follow his example, as he follows the example of Christ. As a leader, your actions will speak louder than your words. Cultivating a servant leadership mindset won't be easy, but with God's guidance, you'll become the leader He's called you to be. Chapter 3 Discovering Your God-Given Purpose Dive deep into your soul and you'll find that God has already planted a unique purpose within you, 
waiting to be discovered and fulfilled. This purpose isn't just about achieving success for yourself, but it's about serving others and glorifying God in the process. In Jeremiah 29 verse 11, God assures you, I know the plans I've for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. To unearth this divine calling, you must first seek God with a sincere heart. As you deepen your relationship with Him, He'll gradually reveal your purpose. This journey isn't a fast track to wealth and success, but a step-by-step -step process of spiritual growth. In Proverbs 3 verses 5 to 6, the Bible instructs, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding, in all your ways submit to Him, and He'll make your paths straight. While it's crucial to pray and meditate on God's Word, it's equally important to listen and act. God often uses people, events, and circumstances to guide us toward our purpose. Don't ignore these divine nudges. Instead, embrace and act on them. Discovering your God-given purpose is an exciting and transformative journey. It'll not only lead you to prosperity but will also fill your life with joy, peace, and fulfillment. Chapter 4. Cultivating a Lifestyle of Gratitude In life's hustle and bustle, it's easy to overlook the countless blessings God bestows upon us each day, but cultivating a lifestyle of gratitude can help you appreciate these divine gifts more deeply. The Bible encourages us to give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus, 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 18. It's not just about saying thank you, but about living with an attitude of thankfulness, even when times are tough. You might be wondering, how can I cultivate this lifestyle of gratitude? Start by acknowledging God as the source of all good things. James 1 verse 17 tells us, Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who doesn't change like shifting shadows. Recognize the blessings you receive, no matter how small they may seem. Even the air you breathe, the food you eat, the family and friends you have, these are all gifts from God. Practice gratitude daily. Make it a habit to thank God for His blessings when you wake up in the morning and before you go to bed at night. Write down what you're grateful for in a journal, and look back on these entries whenever you need a reminder of God's faithfulness. Chapter 5 Overcoming Limiting Beliefs and Fears Countless times, you might find yourself held back by fears and limiting beliefs, but remember, with God's help, you can overcome these obstacles and achieve your full potential. The Bible holds many examples of individuals who overcame their fears through faith. Take David, for instance, a young shepherd who faced the giant warrior Goliath with nothing but his faith in God and a sling. But this isn't just about ancient stories. God's Word is alive and active today. The Bible states in 2 Timothy 1 verse 7, For God hasn't given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Whenever you feel crippled by self-doubt or fear, remember this verse. It's God's promise to you. You might ask, how can I turn my fear into faith? To begin with, acknowledge your fears. It's okay to have them. Fear is a human response. However, don't allow it to control you. Instead, surrender your fears to God. Pray about them. Ask God for the courage to overcome. Secondly, replace your limiting beliefs with God's truths. The Bible is filled with God's promises. Let these promises renew your mind and reshape your thinking. As Romans 12 verse 2 says, Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Indeed, overcoming limiting beliefs and fears is a journey. But with God's help, you can conquer them. Trust in His Word and let His truth set you free. Remember, your potential in God is limitless. Chapter 6 Prioritizing Spiritual Growth and Transformation While conquering limiting beliefs and fears is crucial, it's equally important to prioritize your spiritual development and transformation. This journey isn't just about accumulating wealth and prosperity, it's about becoming a better version of yourself in God's eyes. 
It's about nurturing a personal relationship with God and allowing His Word to guide your actions and decisions. You're called to grow, to transform, to constantly endeavor towards becoming more like Christ. 2 Corinthians 3 verse 18 says, And we all, who with revealed faces contemplate the Lord's glory, are being transformed into His image with ever-increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, who's the Spirit. This transformation isn't a one-time event, it's a lifelong process that requires dedication, perseverance, and faith. Remember, God does not evaluate success by the size of your financial account, but rather by the depth of your faith and the strength of your character. Growing spiritually is a process, not a destination in and of itself. You'll stumble, you'll falter, but remember, His grace is sufficient for you. When you prioritize your spiritual growth, you align yourself with God's will. You allow His wisdom to guide your steps and His peace to calm your heart. You're not alone in this journey. God is with you, guiding you, strengthening you. Prioritize your spiritual growth, and you'll witness how God transforms you into a vessel of His grace, a beacon of His love. As you transform, you'll find that success, wealth, and prosperity follow, not as the goal, but as the byproduct of a life lived in harmony with God's principles. Chapter 7 Applying Biblical Principles to Finances Exploring the world of finances can appear daunting, but when you apply biblical principles, you'll find God's wisdom directing you towards financial stability and success. The Bible isn't silent regarding money matters. It offers the best blueprint for managing your finances in a way that not only benefits you but also honors God. Proverbs 3 verses 9 to 10 instructs, Honor the Lord with your wealth, with the firstfruits of all your crops, then your barns will be filled to overflowing, and your vats will brim over with new wine. This encourages you to prioritize generosity. By giving to the Lord's work, you're investing in His kingdom and storing up treasures in heaven. It's not solely about money, it's about where your heart lies. Another principle to keep in mind is avoiding debt. Romans 13 verse 8 says, Let no debt remain outstanding, except the continuing debt to love one another. The Bible cautions against the dangers of debt, advising you to live within your means and aim for financial freedom. Lastly, it's vital to remember that everything you have belongs to God. Psalm 24 verse 1 affirms, The earth is the Lord's, and everything in it. Acknowledging God as the ultimate provider of your wealth can influence your financial decisions, promoting a mindset of stewardship rather than ownership. Applying these biblical principles to your finances doesn't ensure immediate wealth, but it does promise a flourishing life governed by God's wisdom. Along this journey, you'll realize that true wealth isn't about what you possess, but who you're in God's eyes. Chapter 8 Building Generational Wealth Through Stewardship Building generational wealth isn't just about accumulating riches, it's about adopting a mindset of stewardship, understanding that every blessing you receive is a trust from God to be used wisely. You're not just handling your own finances, you're managing God's resources. This perspective, deeply rooted in Scripture, changes the way you view and interact with wealth. The Bible is full of wisdom on stewardship. In Luke 16 verse 10, Jesus said, Whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with much, and whoever is dishonest with very little will also be dishonest with much. This is a call to prove your trustworthiness in handling God's blessings, even in the smallest things. As a steward, you're responsible for preserving and increasing the wealth you've been trusted with. This goes beyond your lifetime. It's about setting a foundation for generations to come. Proverbs 13 verse 22 says, A good person leaves an inheritance for their children's children. This is the essence of generational wealth, it's not just for you, it's for your children and your children's children. Embrace the call to stewardship. Be wise, be faithful, and be diligent. Remember, it's not about hoarding wealth, but about using it in ways that honor God and benefit others. As you do this, you're not only building generational wealth, but you're also making a lasting impact that echoes into eternity. This is the path to true prosperity. 
Chapter 9 Mastering the Art of Wise Investments Plunge into the world of wise investments, understanding that each decision you make is a critical step towards growing and preserving generational wealth. Remember, the Bible encourages us to be shrewd investors. In Matthew 25 verses 14 to 30, the parable of the talents, Jesus Christ teaches us not to hide our God-given resources but to multiply them. Investing isn't gambling, it's about making educated decisions based on a complete grasp of the risks and potential benefits. God's Word counsels us, the plans of the diligent lead surely to abundance, but everyone who's hasty comes only to poverty, Proverbs 21 verse 5. It's not about quick, reckless decisions but strategic, informed choices that yield long-term benefits. Don't be afraid to seek the advice of experts. Proverbs 15 verse 22 tells us, Without counsel, plans fail, but with many advisors, they succeed. Gather all the wisdom and knowledge you can from trusted sources and use it to make smart investment choices. Remember, your ultimate goal isn't just to amass wealth, but to use it to further God's kingdom. As you grow your wealth through wise investments, keep in mind Proverbs 11 verses 24 to 25, One gives freely, yet grows all the richer, another withholds what he should give, and only suffers want. Whoever brings blessing will be enriched, and one who waters will himself be watered. Mastering the art of wise investments isn't just about financial prosperity, it's about aligning your financial decisions with God's Word. It's about creating a legacy of faith, wisdom, and generosity. Chapter 10 Embracing a Mindset of Abundance to truly thrive, you need to adopt an attitude of abundance, recognizing that God's resources are limitless and He desires to bless you abundantly. This mindset isn't about greed or hoarding, but about realizing the plentiful blessings that God has for you. Remember, He's a God of abundance, not scarcity. In the Bible, God repeatedly promises to provide abundantly for His children. Take, for example, John 10 verse 10, where Jesus says, I have come that they may have life, and have it abundantly. This isn't limited to material wealth, but includes joy, peace, and fulfillment. However, embracing this mindset requires faith. It's about trusting that God will provide for your needs, even in tough times. Consider the story of Elijah and the widow of Zarephath in 1 Kings 17. Even in a severe drought, God provided for both Elijah and the widow, proving that His provision isn't dependent on our circumstances. Furthermore, adopting an abundance mindset means being generous. Proverbs 11 verse 24 says, One gives freely, yet grows all the richer. This isn't a prosperity gospel promise, rather it's a principle of God's kingdom. When you give generously, you're aligning with God's heart and His abundance flows through you. Chapter 11 Leveraging Your God-Given Talents Just as embracing an abundance mindset is key, so is tapping into and making full use of your unique, God-given talents. You see, God has bestowed upon you certain skills and abilities that are uniquely yours. They're not a mistake or a coincidence, they're a divine gift meant to be utilized for your prosperity and for the benefit of those around you. Think about the parable of the talents in Matthew 25 verses 14-30. The servants who used their talents wisely were rewarded, while the one who hid his talent away was reprimanded. This biblical lesson teaches that God expects us to use and maximize the talents He's given us. He doesn't want you to hide your light under a bushel, but rather, to let it shine brilliantly for all to see. Your talent could be anything. Maybe you're a gifted speaker or have a knack for business. Maybe you possess a creative mind that sees beauty and potential where others see nothing. Perhaps you have the ability to inspire and motivate others. Whatever your talent is, acknowledge it, nurture it, and put it to good use. Don't be like the servant who hid his talent, be the servant who multiplied his. Chapter 12 Fostering Healthy Relationships and Connections Drawing from the wisdom of Proverbs 27 verse 17, as iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another, 
it's clear that fostering healthy relationships and connections is essential in your journey to success. You see, you're not just an island, but part of a larger community, and it's through meaningful, supportive connections that you truly thrive and prosper. God encourages us to invest in relationships that refine us, that help us grow in wisdom and character. Just as He exists in a relationship of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, He created us to be relational beings. Your relationships aren't just social constructs, they're divine instruments designed to shape you and bring you closer to His vision for your life. Consider the words in Ecclesiastes 4 verses 9 to 10, Two are better than one, because they've a good return for their labor, if either of them falls down, one can help the other up. This is a powerful reminder that in your journey towards wealth and prosperity, you need others. They'll be there to inspire you, challenge you, support you, and lift you up when you stumble. Chapter 13 Developing a Disciplined Approach to Goal Setting Harnessing the power of discipline in setting and pursuing your goals is a cornerstone of true success, as Paul reminds us in 1 Corinthians 9 verses 24 to 27, Do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one gets the prize? Run in such a way as to get the prize. These words illuminate how important discipline is in achieving your goals. You see, discipline isn't about strict rules or punishment. It's about creating a consistent structure for your actions that help you maintain focus on your God-given goals. It's about being steadfast, much like Noah who faithfully built the ark despite the ridicule, Hebrews 11 verse 7. Start by setting clear and specific goals. Write them down and make them visible. Proverbs 24 verse 27 tells us, Prepare your work outside, get everything ready for yourself in the field, and after that build your house. This biblical wisdom instructs us to prepare and plan before we take action. Next, develop a daily routine that supports these goals. Consistency is key here. Just as Daniel prayed three times a day, regularly, without fail, Daniel 6 verse 10, you too must maintain dedication to your routine. Lastly, practice patience. Remember, the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, being patient about it, until it receives the early and the late rains. James 5 verse 7, Achieving your goals doesn't happen overnight. It takes time, consistent effort, and a disciplined approach to goal setting. Chapter 14 Aligning Your Decisions with Divine Wisdom When it comes to making decisions that impact your life, Aligning them with divine wisdom can set you on a path to genuine success. This doesn't mean you'll never face challenges, instead, it means you're equipped with a perspective that transforms challenges into growth opportunities. The Bible consistently points towards the importance of divine wisdom in Proverbs 3 verses 5 to 6, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding, in all your ways submit to Him, and He'll make your paths straight. You see, God's wisdom surpasses our understanding, and when you align your decisions with His wisdom, you're guided towards wealth and prosperity that bear eternal significance. So, how do you align your decisions with divine wisdom? Start by seeking God's wisdom through prayer and the study of His Word. James 1 verse 5 promises, If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. Your decisions should be a reflection of God's wisdom and not just your own understanding. It's also important to surround yourself with godly counsel. Proverbs 15 verse 22 reminds us, Plans fail for lack of counsel, but with many advisors they succeed. Seek counsel from those who demonstrate a life rooted in God's wisdom. Chapter 15 Overcoming Obstacles and Facing Adversity Journeying through life You'll inevitably encounter obstacles and face adversity, but remember, it's through these challenges that God molds you into a person of character and resilience. Like gold refined in fire, hardships and trials serve to purify and strengthen you, 1 Peter 1 verse 7, preparing you for the prosperity God has in store for you. Throughout the Bible, there are several accounts of people who overcame challenges and triumphed as a result of their faith. Consider Job who despite intense suffering, 
held onto his faith and was ultimately restored twofold, Job 42 verse 10. Or Joseph, who was sold into slavery, yet rose to become the second most powerful man in Egypt, saving many lives during a famine, Genesis 41. These biblical heroes didn't let obstacles deter them from their divine purpose. Similarly, you're to face your challenges boldly, using them as stepping stones to greater heights. Lean on God's promises during these times. He assures you in Isaiah 41 verse 10, Fear not, for I am with you, be not dismayed, for I am your God. I'll strengthen you, yes, I'll help you, I'll uphold you with my righteous right hand. Recall that God's plans for your good, Jeremiah 29 verse 11. Don't be disheartened by adversity, rather embrace it as part of God's refining process. Recall that every difficulty presents an opportunity for personal development, learning, and character building required to manage the money and success God wishes to bring into your life. Trust His process and maintain your faith, even when facing adversity. Chapter 16 Practicing Biblical Principles of Time Management In the midst of life's hustle and bustle, it's essential that you embrace the biblical principles of time management, understanding that each second is a gift from God, meant to be used wisely and purposefully. Ephesians 5 verse 16 urges you to make the most of every opportunity, a clear call to value your time and use it judiciously. Consider the example of Jesus, who, despite his short lifespan on earth, accomplished his divine mission. He managed his time efficiently, balancing periods of teaching, healing, praying, and resting. You can mirror this balance, prioritizing your activities and allotting time for spiritual growth, work, rest, and service. Prayer is an essential component in this process. As you seek God's guidance in managing your time, you'll find that He provides clarity and direction. Just as in Proverbs 3 verses 5 to 6 where you're encouraged to trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding, in all your ways submit to Him, and He'll make your paths straight. You're also called to avoid procrastination. The book of Proverbs is filled with warnings against laziness and the squandering of time. Proverbs 6 verses 6 to 8, for instance, uses the diligence of the ant as a lesson in productivity and wise time management. Chapter 17 Cultivating a Lifestyle of Continuous Learning Embracing the wisdom of Proverbs 9 verse 9, which says, Give instruction to a wise man, and he'll be still wiser, teach a righteous man, and he'll increase in learning, you're called to cultivate a lifestyle of continuous learning, a lifelong quest that not only enriches your mind but also nourishes your spirit. Just as Paul advised Timothy in 2 Timothy 2 verse 15, Study to shew thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, you too are encouraged to immerse yourself in learning. Your pursuit of knowledge shouldn't be limited to understanding God's Word but should extend to every area of your life. Remember, learning isn't an event, it's a process. Just as the manna in the wilderness was fresh every morning for the Israelites, God has fresh insights and revelations for you every day. But you must be willing to receive and apply these. Your commitment to continuous learning is like the parable of the sower in Matthew 13. The seed symbolizing God's Word, can only grow and produce fruit in good soil, representing a receptive and teachable heart. Don't become complacent with your current level of knowledge. As Deuteronomy 31 verse 12 instructs, gather the people together, men, women, and little ones, so they may hear and learn and fear the Lord your God, diligently observing all the words of this law. Cultivating a lifestyle of continuous learning leads you into deeper fellowship with God, broadens your perspective, and ultimately prepares you for success. Chapter 18 Maintaining a Balanced Approach to Success As you nourish your intellect with ongoing learning, it's equally crucial to maintain a balanced attitude to achievement, making sure your ambitions match with God's will and purpose for your life. Remember, achieving success isn't just about amassing riches or gaining worldly recognition. It's about living out God's plan in a way that glorifies Him. The Bible says in Proverbs 16 verse 3, Commit your work to the Lord, and your plans will be established. 
This verse is a reminder that your efforts should be committed to God. It's in this divine alignment where true prosperity lies, not just in material wealth but in joy, peace, and fulfillment. It is important to resist the temptation to concentrate entirely on your own aspirations or desires. Instead, seek to understand and fulfill God's purpose for your life. When you achieve this equilibrium, your route to success will become clearer and more fulfilling. It's about being faithful in the small things and trusting God's direction, even when the route isn't straightforward. The Apostle Paul wrote in Philippians 4 verses 12 to 13, I know how to be brought low, and I know how to abound. In any and every circumstance, I've learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. I can do all things through Him who strengthens me. Through life's ups and downs, remain steadfast in your faith and maintain a balanced approach to success. This way, you're not just succeeding in the world's eyes, but you're truly prosperous in the eyes of God. Remember, true success is God-given, not self-made. Chapter 19 Developing a Philanthropic Mindset and Generosity Often, you'll find that the path to true success is paved with generosity and a heart for giving. This is a principle deeply rooted in the Bible. Proverbs 11 verses 24 to 25 states, One person gives freely, yet gains even more, another withholds unduly, but comes to poverty. A generous person will prosper, whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. Here, you'll see that a philanthropic mindset and generosity aren't just good for the soul, they're a divine blueprint for prosperity. Remember, your wealth and success aren't solely for personal satisfaction. Instead, they're tools God has granted you to be a blessing to others. Embrace the mindset of a giver, and watch how God multiplies your blessings in return. This doesn't mean you should give expecting something in return, but rather because it's the right thing to do. It's about developing a heart that finds joy in the act of giving itself. Just as the Macedonian churches in 2 Corinthians 8 verse 2, in the midst of a very severe trial, their overflowing joy and their extreme poverty welled up in rich generosity, you too can find the strength to be generous even in your lowest moments. This isn't just about financial giving but also about giving your time, skills, and love to those who need it. Develop a philanthropic mindset and embrace generosity. This won't only secure earthly rewards but, more importantly, it will store up treasures in heaven. Always remember, it's in giving that we receive. Chapter 20 Embracing the Power of Prayer and Meditation In the midst of life's trials and tribulations, don't forget the power that prayer and meditation hold, offering solace and strength like no other. These spiritual tools can become your sanctuary, helping you navigate the uncertainties that life throws your way. The Bible, in Philippians 4 verse 6, clearly states, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. This scripture encourages you to lay your worries before God through prayer. In turn, you'll find peace that surpasses human understanding, fortifying your heart and mind. Prayer isn't just a way to ask for your desires, it's a divine channel of communication, fostering a deeper relationship with God. It's your chance to express gratitude, seek guidance, and find solace in His presence. Meanwhile, meditation allows you to reflect on God's Word, giving you the clarity needed to align your actions with His will. Joshua 1 verse 8 says, Keep this book of the law always on your lips, meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you'll be prosperous and successful. This biblical mandate points to meditation as a key to achieving success and prosperity. Embrace the power of prayer and meditation. Take time each day to communicate with God, to listen, to reflect on His Word. It's through this practice that you'll find the wisdom and strength to pursue wealth and prosperity as God intends. Chapter 21 Overcoming Procrastination and Developing Consistency Overcoming procrastination and cultivating consistency are important steps on your path to success, just as prayer and meditation can help you achieve serenity and knowledge. Proverbs 13 verse 4 says, 
The soul of the sluggard craves and gets nothing, while the soul of the diligent is richly supplied. This scripture highlights the importance of diligence and consistency in achieving wealth and prosperity. Procrastination is often the enemy of progress. It's a trap that can prevent you from moving forward. But, remember, God didn't create you to be stagnant, He designed you to thrive. In Proverbs 18 verse 9, it's written that, whoever is slack in his work is a brother to him who destroys. Don't let procrastination destroy your dreams. Overcome it with the strength that God provides. Consistency, on the other hand, is the key to opening the door to success. It's not about making massive leaps, but rather making small, consistent steps. The Bible illustrates this principle in Luke 16 verse 10, whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with much. Consistency in small things leads to trust in larger matters. God wants you to prosper, but you must play your part by overcoming procrastination and developing consistency. Pray for strength, meditate on His Word, and take action. As you do, you'll find that the path to wealth and prosperity becomes clearer and more achievable. Keep faith, hold on to God's promises and remember, the plans of the diligent lead surely to abundance, Proverbs 21 verse 5. In God, you have the ultimate partner for your success journey. Chapter 22 Leveraging the Power of Accountability and Mentorship Harnessing the power of accountability and mentorship can propel you towards your success, just as David prospered under the mentorship of Samuel in the Bible. These two principles are crucial pillars in your journey to prosperity. They're not just good to have, they're essential. You see, accountability positions you in a place of responsibility, pushing you to not just dream, but to act. It's like having a Nathaniel by your side, reminding you to stay true to your vision. John 1 verse 47. Mentorship, on the other hand, provides wisdom and guidance. It's like having a Paul in your life, guiding you like Timothy, sharing his experiences, and helping you navigate the path to success, 2 Timothy 1 verse 2. Your mentor is your beacon, someone who's trodden the path you're undertaking and can provide invaluable guidance. Remember, where there's no guidance, a people falls, but in an abundance of counselors there's safety, Proverbs 11 verse 14. Now, it's important to find the right mentor. Pray for discernment, like Solomon, who asked God for wisdom and received it abundantly, 1 Kings 3 verse 9. Seek a mentor who's a heart for God, a successful track record, and a genuine interest in your success. Embrace accountability and mentorship. Let them serve as tools to sharpen you, just as, iron sharpens iron, and one person sharpens another, Proverbs 27 verse 17. Remember, God doesn't want you to walk this journey alone. He provides mentors and accountability partners to guide, encourage, and spur you towards the wealth and prosperity He's in store for you. Chapter 23 Discovering the Importance of Rest and Renewal While embracing accountability and mentorship paves the way to success, Don't forget the divine principle of rest and renewal, as God Himself rested on the seventh day of creation, Genesis 2 verses 2-3. This isn't merely an ancient principle, Jesus Christ also endorsed the importance of rest, saying, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I'll give you rest, Matthew 11 verse 28. You see, your journey to prosperity isn't a sprint, it's a marathon. Therefore, you can't expect to run relentlessly without periods of rest and rejuvenation. Just as God took time to rest after six days of creating the world, you too need to find your rhythm of work and rest. Think of rest and renewal as the necessary pit stops in your race to success. It's in these moments of quiet solitude that you're able to refuel, reassess your progress, and realign with your purpose. It's here that you experience God's peace that surpasses all understanding, Philippians 4 verse 7, strengthening you for the journey ahead. Moreover, rest is a form of trust, a confirmation of your faith in God's providence. By choosing to rest, you're acknowledging that success isn't entirely dependent on your ceaseless efforts, but on God's grace and favor. It's not just about what you do, but what God accomplishes through you. 
Chapter 24 Aligning Your Work With Your Calling Understanding your divine calling and aligning it with your work isn't merely an optional step on your journey to success, it's an integral part of God's plan for you. In Proverbs 16 verse 9, the Bible tells us, In their hearts humans plan their course, but the Lord establishes their steps. This means that while you have the freedom to choose your path, God has a divine blueprint for your life that He wants you to discover and follow. When you link your employment with your calling, you're not simply working for a salary, but also for a cause. You're not just earning a living, you're living out God's plan. As you do this, you'll find that your work becomes more fulfilling and meaningful. You'll experience a sense of joy, peace, and satisfaction that money can't buy. So, how do you align your work with your calling? Start by seeking God's guidance through prayer and reading His Word. Ask Him to reveal your divine purpose and to give you the wisdom to understand it. Next, reflect on your talents, skills, and passions. What are you naturally good at? What do you love to do? These are clues to your calling. Once you've identified your calling, look for ways to incorporate it into your work. This might mean changing careers, starting a business, or using your current job as a platform to serve others. Remember, it's not about making money, it's about making a difference. By aligning your work with your calling, you're not just succeeding in the world's eyes, you're succeeding in God's eyes. Chapter 25 Leaving a Lasting Legacy of Faith and Obedience After aligning your work with your calling, the next step in your journey is considering the legacy you're building, a legacy rooted not just in worldly success, but more importantly, in faith and obedience to God. This isn't about the temporary riches you've amassed, but the eternal values you've instilled, the lives you've touched, and the difference you've made in the world through your obedience to God's Word. Just as God commanded Abraham in Genesis 22 verse 18, through your offspring, all nations on earth will be blessed, because you have obeyed me. You're called to not only receive God's blessing but to be a channel of blessings to others. Your obedience to God's leadings paves the way for the next generation. Remember, your legacy isn't just about what you leave for people, but what you leave in people. In Proverbs 13 verse 22, the Bible says, A good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children. But it's not just talking about material wealth. Your greatest inheritance to your descendants is a legacy of faith, obedience, and godly values. It's about imparting wisdom and demonstrating a life lived in humble submission to God's will. In your pursuit of success, don't lose sight of this, true prosperity transcends material wealth. It's about living a life that glorifies God and points others towards Him. It's about leaving a legacy that outlives you, one that continues to bear fruit long after you've gone. That's the kind of legacy that truly matters. It's your responsibility, and it's within your reach. Embrace it with faith and obedience. Like a seed sown in fertile ground, when you align your mindset with God's principles, you'll yield a harvest of wealth and prosperity. Remember, your journey to success isn't just about earthly riches. It's about cultivating a lifestyle of learning, gratitude, and servant leadership, while overcoming your fears. With God as your guide and mentor, you're destined for a prosperous life that leaves a lasting legacy of faith and obedience. Thanks for listening.